Hi, I'm Stuck, and this is Bounty Thursdays. And do I have a great show for you today. We're gonna to talk about vulnerable GraphQL apps, Java deserialization resources, new podcasts, huge word lists, recon and OSINT research, DNS resolvers, how to store your subdomain inside the framework, easy recon automation, and much, much more. So if you're ready for this, buckle up, here we go. But before we get started, Quick disclaimer, any of the scripts, tools, repositories and stuff you see mentioned on this show is for educational purposes only and primarily aimed for people that are cybersecurity curious or professionals in the cybersecurity industry. Maybe you find yourself in a situation where you realize, damn, I don't have enough DNS resolvers and are they valid or not? You're, hey. You don't really know. So in that case, John Barber has a really nice Git repository that's getting updated every day using Vortex DNS validator tools. You can get a nice fresh list of all those resolvers by just curling that list and putting those in the text file. Um, good stuff if you're doing a mass resolves of domains and wanna make sure that, hey, you got a couple of valid ones. It's almost been a year, but Naham Khan is back. So for the 2021 edition, it's gonna be hosted by no other than your favorite Naham Sek together with the Cyber Mentor and John Hammond. There's gonna be some amazing talks presented by speakers like Lee, myself, C. Shano, Tom Nanam, Insider, PhD, Farah, Shubs, and many, many more. If you haven't already signed up for this bug bounty related awesome AppSec event, I definitely recommend you that you head over to the nahamcon.com website and sign up as soon as possible. It's going live on the third, the 14th of March. And if a full day of conferences wasn't enough for you, on the 15th, the day after NahamCon, I'm speaking at the OWASP Lightning Conference on a topic called how to turn your cybersecurity hobby into a career, where I give my perspective on, you know, how you can take your cybersecurity curiosity and bug bounty adventure and turn that into a career and maybe a future gig. So if that's something that would be interesting, I would say head over to the OWASP website and uh, sign up for that one. If you like me and loving yourself a little bit of that nice turbo intruder magic, um, I would recommend you to update to the latest version. Turbo, turbo intruder is now version 1.1.4 and it has some uh, deadlocks fixes that could occur in conjunction with SAML Rider and made some improvements to the responses with no uh, contact length. It's always good to update to the latest and remember, just because things are in the BAP, maybe you need to dig in a little bit to the original gut re uh, Git repos to get the latest builds. If you haven't listened in to Detectify's um, podcast called Undetected, I would recommend you to do that because Laura, the host, is talking to different people that are both from our industry and outside. So it's Specifically, I would like you to check out the episode together with Fredrik Anbrot. He was one of the founders of Detectify and he talks about bug bounties. And since this is kind of related to bug bounties and everything we talk about is app, uh, application security, um, check out the second episode of Undetected with Fredrik Anbrot and um, get some really cool insights what's going on inside his head when it comes to crowdsourced hacking and crowdsource uh, security testing. Okay, so you're out hacking and you realize, oh man, this is GraphQL. How do, how do I, how do I GraphQL? That you can practice some damn vulnerable GraphQL application. And this is an application that is intentionally vulnerable and it's an implementation of Facebook GraphQL technolo technology. It's been used widely and it's a really good way for you to practice on things that you know are broken. And since it's a local instance, you just git clone 
Python it and you're up and running on port 5000 locally. You can um, mess around with that, trying some techniques, learning how things work, and you will be ready to ready to enter those battle hardened uh, versions that you're probably going to find when you're doing bounties. So. If you want to get up to code and, and feel that you are confident in hacking GraphQL, download the damn vulnerable GraphQL application and uh, fire away. Okay, I'm worthless at storing my information in a, I don't know, a, a useful way. I store everything in text files. I uh, pile up on a lot of things, but since Honoki released the BBRF, so the Bug Bounty Recon Framework, I've been starting to use that and it makes my life a little bit easier. What it does is that it stores a lot of information in the central couch DB, so I can just use the Bug Bounty Recon Framework client to connect to that and just get the data that are stored. So if I have multiple boxes and I have information, which in this case is subdomains and IP addresses that I've collected over time and I want it to be stored in one place so I can just query it and get information out. Um, because I continuously brute force for subdomains and stuff and I want to make sure that I stay inside the scope and not outside and you know accidentally do stuff. And this is where this application comes to help because you will define what what is in scope and you will define what's not in scope and you can create different uh, scopes and different targets. Uh, so let's say that I was hunting on, I don't know, Citrix maybe, uh, and I wanted to get all the subdomains that are available on their some of their domains and I'm using subfinder to, to store that. So I'm getting all the results in and instead of you piping into a new and having a text file, I'm just gonna pipe it straight Straight, strictly straight into uh, BBRF. That means that if I'm having another box or another system that I have the BBRF client installed on, I can query that data and always have it updated. It's very useful if you have multiple uh, boxes running, doing different kind of stuff. Maybe you have one that's just only doing brute forcing. Maybe you're having, uh, I don't know, a bunch of, uh, maybe you're spinning up a fleet and uh, in Axiom and you want to get all that DNS data just processed and have it in one good place. And this is where BBRF really shines. It's the central storage of everything. And it's just JSON files, it's accessible. And if you're, uh, it's very, very simple setup. If you're already using Axiom, it's more or less just billing it using one of those predefined uh, BBRF builds that Pry created. Uh, I, I would definitely like, uh, recommend you to, to check this out and play around with it. It has huge potential and it's a nice way to have your own repository kind of with you at all times when you need to look for subdomains and add and remove stuff. Really good. And if you are subscribing to this channel, you already are a member of the Vibe Squad. I'm very grateful to have you and it's been so amazing seeing you in the comments over the last couple of weeks. Um, big shout out to all my patrons as well that decided to support the show. Big shout out to all my sponsors that's been with me uh, since yeah the beginning of 2020. And um, yeah, I'm very, very grateful for each and every one of you for watching and liking, sharing sharing and doing the things that I do. And if you want to communicate with me directly, I would suggest that you head over to twitter.com at Stoke Frederick and just, you know, that's, that's mostly where I spend most of my time. So if you want to get me interested in something, tag me in things that are, that you think is interesting. Maybe you got some ideas for Bounty Thursday. Let me know over at Twitter or leave some information here in the comments. So on the 19th, I sent out a tweet where, you know, I wanted to know more about uh, insecurity or serialization in Java. I wasn't interested in PHP, more Java because I was working on something. And uh, I wanted some tips and videos write-ups and the community answered. So I have a great thread now where a lot of information related to insecure deserialization and the different attacks that you can use on that. Um, I'm still in the learning process of this, so I'm reading through all of them. But if you are also interested in insecure deserialization in Java, I would recommend you to check out that thread. It's 
filled with good, awesome information, everything from write-ups to, to um, uh, labs to videos. Uh, yeah, so if you're like me, curious about insecure sterilization issues and uh, inside Java, definitely check that thread out. So you'll be using Shodan to passively use collect um, security data or get an idea or do some recon on your target. But the question is, have you used Spice? Uh, because Spice.com is a search engine that kind of does the same. It collects all publicly available data about websites, uh, servers, who owns them and you know how they are connected to the internet. Checks for open ports, what kind of certificate, it analyzes and crawls the information that's on the websites or these hosts and then they give you the possibility to use a pretty advanced filter to search and filter things out. I really like their service and I'm very, very grateful that they decided to become sponsors of this episode. And if you want to get 20% off the monthly discount, use the Stoke 20 discount code you, during the checkout. And if you uh, want to have 30% off the annual discount, use Stoke 30 instead. It's a really cool service and if you're not particularly used to Bug Bounty Hunter, it's a very useful tool to look up DNSs and domains and who owns what. And if you're into threat hunting and forensics, it's a really, really interesting tool set. Um, and they have a full API that you guys query and get the data using YQ straight into your automation. Winning! So 6 to this created this huge word list uh, a while back. It's a collection of all the different resources you can find put into one. Bam! It's one huge word list with everything you can ever want from it. But a few days ago, they also released Recon FTW, which is, if you ever use Lazy Recon by Nahamsek, it's a bash script that calls a lot of different tools and collects data and then outputs that for you in a nice and simple format. Recon FTW has done this too, and it's a tool designed to perform automated recon on a target domain by running the best set of tools and probably scanning and finding out different vulnerabilities. It does some Google dorking. It looks for multiple sub subdomain enumeration. It brute forces, it looks for permutations. It takes screenshots. It is, it is a template scanner. It, it's a port scanner. It uses URL extraction, pattern search, parameter discovery, XSS, open redirect, SSR, GitHub, blah, 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 and on and on. It does a lot of things for you. Uh, probably not a good idea to take this and just chug it away at a random target. You kind of need to know that you're standing, that you're staying inside your scope. So, but that said, it, it's a cool script and you should definitely, if you're interested in automation and or getting inspired by doing this kind of automation, check that one out. If you're not already a part of the Twitter family and InfoSec, that's kind of where you're su supposed to be. So. Yeah, I'll see you there and until next time, stay curious.